Okay, so what's up guys? This is Sir Ken again with another YouTube video. And this time po, ang pag-aaralan po natin is Media and Information Languages. So kung di ka pa po subscriber ng aking YouTube channel, um, click nyo na po yung subscribe button dyan below. And then i-ring nyo na rin yung bell para lagi kayo notified sa ating uh, mga YouTube video. Okay? So, sige po. Uh, let's start. Okay, according to Marshall McLuhan, um, language may be a source of misunderstanding. So, naniniwala po ba kayo sa sinabi ni Mr. Marshall McLuhan na language may be a source of misunderstanding? Okay, so I think um, naniniwala tayo dito ang lahat. At some point, naniniwala tayo sa sinabi niya. Because sometimes, um, what we mean does not always have the same meaning for the others. So, baka mamaya, um, iba yung pag-thinking niya or iba yung thinking stream niya so, or iba yung thinking niya pagdating doon sa sinabi po natin. Especially pagka, um, pagka tayo is nakikipag-communicate through text or through chat po. So, in different countries, so in different countries or in different um, lugar dito sa atin sa Pilipinas, meron silang mga different um, dialects na ginagamit po. And then, yung multiple languages po. So, with that, so merong pwedeng um, yung meaning na para sa atin is okay, pero para sa kanila is hindi. So, um, there are some cases na ganun yung scenario natin. So, same din sa pakikipag-usap natin or sa pakikipag-chat po natin, sometimes na may misinterpret tayo. So, through the way of... Um, analyzing yung message na sinasabi po natin to chat. Okay? So, that's why, um, according to Mar uh, Mr. Marshall McLuhan, language may be a source of misunderstanding. Okay, so let's proceed. So, what is media languages? These are codes, conventions, or formats. That's uh, symbols and narrative structures that indicate the meaning of the media messages to the audience or to an audience. Okay? Next is, Languages. It pertains to the technical and symbolic ingredients or codes and conventions that media and information professionals may select and use in the effort to communicate ideas, information, and knowledge to others. So next po natin, we have codes po uh, when it comes to our languages. And codes are system or sign that when put together, it creates a meaningful uh, it creates a meaning. Okay, so take note. Sem ang semiotic po, it is the study of signs and symbols and their use of interpretation. So we have different types of codes. We have the symbolic codes, the written codes, and lastly, the technical codes. So isa-isahin natin, ano nga ba si symbolic codes, si written codes, at si technical codes. So first is the symbolic codes. These are the languages, dress, or actions of characters or iconic symbols that are easily understood. It shows what is beneath the surface of what we see. Okay, so basically, um, ang magandang example po dito is different figures, uh, different characters, different symbols, or different emojis natin na pagka uh, nakita po natin, so pagka nakita natin, meron meaningful or meron tayo na iintindihan na hidden message towards it. Okay? So, one good example of this is a rose. So, pag nakita natin ang rose, ang naiisip natin is um, love or affection. So, kaya nga, di ba, pagka, um, pagka tayo is, or pagka tayo ay nag- uh, nanliligaw or halimbawa naman is Valentine's Day nagbibigay tayo ng red roses sa ating mga uh, magulang so, so either sa mom nyo or sa girlfriend or nililigawan nyo because it symbolizes uh, love for them so love for them okay so also um, pagka tayo ay uh, pagka may mga special occasion so like the uh, debut or even um, Mother's Day. So, nagbibigay tayo ng rose. So, um, para mag-symbolize din ng love po 
sa parents natin, and so on. Okay? So, that, uh, again, red rose symbolizes love po. While, pagdating naman sa dove, we all know that it symbolizes peace and freedom. That's why, di ba, pagka mayroon tayong mga mahal sa buhay, once na sila ay um, uh, nasa payapa na, so, kadalasan may nagpapalipad ng mga white dove. So, it symbolizes ng freedom. So, it symbolizes peace. Okay? And this one, so, I think alam na alam po natin to. So, red means stop, yellow means wait, and green means go. So, basically, even yung stoplight po natin, pag nakita po natin yung symbol niya, alam na po agad natin yung ibig sabihin. That's why, di ba, pagka um, sa mga... Um, sa mga highway, so sa mga highway or sa national road po natin, pag nakakita tayo ng stoplight, so titigil, uh, pag nakakita tayo ng red na stoplight, so titigil po yung sasakyan natin. So once na nag-green, saka lang po uh, under yung sasakyan and so on. Okay? So next po natin is, meron din tayong mga different logos and different symbols na pagka nakita po natin, alam na kagad natin yung ibig sabihin. Like for example, This one. So, alam natin na sa unang tingin pa lang, alam natin na that is Facebook. This emoji stands for being silent. So, pag nakita natin yung emoji na to, alam na agad natin na pinapatahimik tayo or secret or secret lang yung sinabi sa atin ng isang tao and so on. And itong part na to, which is no P ang nakalagay, so instead na or alam natin na kahit No, tapos P yung nakalagay na sign is no parking siya. Even though, yung, uh, even though hindi car yung ginawang sample sa picture. Okay? Because we are knowledgeable pagdating po sa different symbols po. Okay? So, others are logos coming from different brands such as Adidas, Apple, so Apple, uh, Nike, and, uh, and many more. Okay? So, let's go naman sa written codes. So, this is the use of languages, style, and textual layout. So, one good example ng written codes po natin is headlines. Okay, sa so unang tingin nyo sa headlines, ang unang makikita po natin is hugs are now completely safe. Okay? So, tingin nyo bakit? So, because... Um, first, yung printed style niya po is, or yung font niya po is easy to read and then large po yung letters na ginamit. So, large na letters and then bold po yung text po. So, kadalasan dito po sa headlines po natin, so we all know naman, uh, nandito yung title of our newspaper na uh, magiging top of the story ng ating um, news ngayon. Okay? So, pagdating po dun sa ating headlines. While slogan naman, so slogan and taglines. So, uh, si slogan is it highlights yung brand to be memorable sa atin. So, kadalasan ito yung nag increase ng sales or kadalasan pagdating sa mga slogans natin. Ito yung laging tumatatak sa isip ng mga tao once na Uh, narinig yung ganung word or once na narinig yung word is automatically, ah, ito, Nike to. So, pag narinig nila, halimbawa, just do it. So, Nike agad yung pumapasok sa isip nila. So, pag naman, halimbawa, narinig nila yung papara, papa, love ko to. So, makdo yung nasa isip nila. O di kaya naman, pagka sa ibang bansa siguro, um, I'm loving it po yung um, tawag sa kanila and so on. While the taglines naman, so this highlights po yung purpose. So yung purpose naman ng isang or ito yung nagde-define sa brand na dinalagay po natin. Like for example, um, sa Apple natin, it's think different. So we all know naman na pagdating sa Apple po is iba yung uh, bionic chip na ginagamit sa kanya. So co compare sa mga Android phones natin. That's why um, isa 'yun sa isa 'yun sa kanilang um, tagline na nagpo-provide ng purpose pagdating sa kanilang brand. Okay? So I think naiintindihan natin si slogan. 
and si taglines po natin. So, let's proceed naman po sa mga speech bubbles. Okay, as you can see dito, uh, meron po tayong speech bubbles ni Garfield. So, as you can see, um, may different kinds of speech bubbles tayo. Yung isa cloudy, yung isa naman po ay normal na speech bubbles. So, yung sa cloudy part ni Garfield, so, yan po yung part na um, hindi talaga totally nagsasalita si Garfield, pero um, pero may sinasabi siya sa sarili niya or may sinasa nagsasalita siya, uh, kausap niya yung sarili niya, okay? So, while yung z, z, z naman, so, ito yung actual na sounds na naririnig ng tao involving the story po. Okay? So, according sa Google, so, speech bubbles, uh, it illustrates someone uh, or a response that have said pagdating sa mga comic strip or even different scenario. So, it can also reactively explore on a person. So, if ever na halimbawa, meron siyang uh, merong arguments na nangyayari or upset or um, based dun sa emotion na meron sila, uh, based dun sa kung paano nila sinasabi yung mga words, yun po yung ginagamitan or dun po ginagamit si speech bubbles. Okay? Next po natin is the net speak. Okay, so net speak, these are abbreviated phrases or shortened words commonly used to converse in text online. Okay, so one good example of net speaks po natin is LOL or laughing out loud, ROFL or rolling on the floor laughing, BRB or be right back, IDK or I don't know, GR8 or great, uh, JK so or just kidding, L8R or later, OT or off topic, uh, IMO or in my opinion, IMHO, in my honest opinion, PIA, Thanks in advance, TY, thank you, DL, download, OMG or oh my gosh, and NVM, never mind. So, uh, yan yung mga sample natin na kadalasan nakikita natin sa mga social media natin, such as in Instagram, Twitter, or even sa comment section pagdating sa mga Facebook. Na kadalasan, uh, hindi natin alam yung meaning um, totally, so, or hindi naman talaga totally inaaral siya, pagdating sa ating, uh, hindi naman totally inaaral siya kadalasan pagdating sa ating mga books, pero um, nalalaman natin siya dahil sa wide use of our internet or sa wide use natin ng media natin. So, may, mayroon ka bang alam na netspeak? So, comment down below yung netspeak na alam mo na hindi ko na uh, ilagay dito sa ating um, PowerPoint. Okay? Next po natin is the lead speak. So, it is a language developed by hackers which allowed them to sleep past security filters. It works by substituting letters with numbers or different letters that are similar in appearance. Uh, it became popular that even social media users use it too. So, again, si lead speak po natin, ang nagdevelop po nito before is hackers po. So, hindi po Jejemon. So, kadalasan kasi sinasabi ng mga students is Jejemon daw yung nagpausa uh, nitong um, lead speak natin. So, si lead speak natin, uh, it comes from the hackers and then since alam naman natin yung widely spread ng media po natin. So, automatically, so since kumalat na nang kumalat yung lead speak, so from one person to another, so na-adapt na po natin to until... Uh, ginagawa na siyang kadalasan na username natin once na once na yung username natin is uh, or once na yung gusto nating username has already existed na po. Okay? So, that's one good example ng mga lead speak po natin. Yung lalagyan natin ng mga symbols. So, instead na letters yung gagamitin po natin, symbols po. Okay, here are some examples ng ating lead speak po. Okay? So, tingnan po natin maigi. Okay, so ito naman po yung example coming from the internet ng normal text po and then uh, it transitioned into a lead speak. So, kung di pa rin po maintindihan natin kung ano po ang lead speak, so ito po siya. So, from skills 
nagiging SKI-11S. From Noob, nagiging NO or N00B. From Hello, nagiging H3-LLO. So, from Babe, nagiging V4-B3. So, parang counter-strike lang, di ba? Okay, so that is one, um, that is some examples po natin ng Leet Speak. Ikaw ba, guys? Or kayo ba dyan? Gumagamit ba kayo ng Leet Speak for your username? Or gumagamit ba kayo ng Leet Speak para makipag-usap sa ibang tao? So, comment below din po, if ever. Okay? So, thank you. Next po natin is our technical codes. So, these are sounds, camera angles, type of shots, and lighting. So, they may include emonious music to communicate danger in a feature film or high-angle camera shots to create a feeling of power in a photograph. So, this is, uh, these are the ways in which equipment is used to tell the story. So, mo mostly si technical codes natin, siya po yung mga different camera angles po natin, uh, even music, so mu music or even camera positioning natin, na at some point, um, it provides deep emotion po sa atin when, when it comes to movie. So, for example, pagka manonood tayo ng isang movie, tapos, uh, let's say, hindi pinaghandaan yung kulay, do you think uh, yung emotion inside that movie is magbo-boost out? So, I think, I think hindi. So, for example naman, pag halimbawa, nakakaiyak yung part ng movie, tapos, uh, um, tapos wala siyang background music, or yung background music niya instead na nakakaiyak is um nakakatawa yung nakakatawa yung background music so probably hindi tayo uh, hindi lalabas yung emotion natin or hindi tayo madadala madadala ng emotion natin through the through that music na hindi naman appropriate dun sa tagdito sa different scenarios okay so here are some examples of technical codes po natin First is the camera shots. Okay. So, meron po tayong tinatawag na extreme long shots or it is also called extreme wide shots such as a large crowd scene or a view of scenery as far as the horizon. So, kadalasan si extreme long shots po is um, pumapasok po siya pagdating sa mga um, first scenario po natin or dun sa settings ng story po natin. So, pinapakita dito yung mga settings ng story po natin pagdating sa extreme long shots. And then yung uh, kung ano yung meron sa paligid niya. So, kung alam niyo yung film, uh, this comes from, or this shot comes from Harry Potter po. So, if you already watch Harry Potter, I think you are all familiar po pagdating sa Hogwarts. So, as you can see guys, um, warm color yung ginamit po dito. Okay, next is we have the long shot. A view of situation or setting from a distance. So, same lang din ng kanina. So, Hogwarts din. So, a view of settings din pagdating po sa ating long shot. But this time, as you can see, uh, gumamit sila dito ng cool colors. So, while on the other hand, gumamit sila ng warm color. So... Um, basically, pagka gumagamit po tayo ng warm and cool color, so it mixes yung, um, nagpapakita ito ng conflict, so conflict sa story, or it mixes yung emotion natin pagdating sa pinapanood natin na movie. So, cool colors, pagka magkakaroon ng mga problema, so problema or conflict sa uh, story, or there are deep sadness, sa different parts. So, kadalasan ginagamit ang cool, warm and cool color uh, sa mga throwback scenes. So, sa mga throwback uh, episodes and so on. Um, again, uh, warm, uh, cool colors is used para po sa mga conflict scenes. While warm colors naman, so as we can see, um, makulay siya. So, makulay siya or light colors yung ginagamit. So, um, it provides na happiness yung makikita dito sa scene na to. So, happiness. And then, um, and then, nandun yung wala pang conflict sa story. So, just just a joyful moment when it comes sa character and then sa cast, um, sa cast inside it. Okay? So, that is um, example po natin ng warm 
and cool colors. So, proceed naman po tayo sa medium long shot. So, it shows a group of people in interaction with each other. Okay? So, one good example is from the movie The Greatest Showman. So, sa The Greatest Showman, um, kung napanood nyo na yung movie na The Greatest Showman, so, even though uh, kadalasan nakafocus yung screen kay Hugh Jackman or si P.T. Barnum sa film, is nakikita po natin yung mga tao or yung mga tauhan, yung mga different characters na nakikisayaw at nakikikanta po at nakikikanta po during dun sa pagkanta nila ng The Greatest Show. Uh, the Greatest Show. Okay, and with that, or through the use of medium uh, long shot, it shows yung a uh, different interaction ng different um, characters pagdating dun sa main character po natin. Okay? So, that's what we call the medium long shot. Okay? Next po natin is the full shot. A view of figures of entire body in order to show action and or a constellation group of character. So, full shot communicates the appearance, movement, mannerism, traits, or action of the characters before focusing on their reaction or feeling. So, one good example is from the movie Thor. So, as you can see, um, pinapakita dito si Thor, of course. So, si Thor, of course. Um, pagdating sa mga full shot po natin, so, dito pinapakita yung mga in, um, kanilang mga mannerisms, yung kanilang different action, kumbaga pagtindig pa lang nila, so, pagtindig, um, bawat ki, uh, kibo nila, bawat galaw nila. So, even though um, nagpapakita ito ng even though hindi sabihin ng uh, or walang narrator sa isang movie na magsasabi na si Thor ay isang matapang na tao, pero the way he acts pa lang, so the way he he acts pa lang, is alam na natin kung ano yung pinoportray niya. Na isa siyang matapang na Avenger or isa siyang matapang na superhero na kaya niyang labanan lahat ng um, lahat ng mga uh, mobs or lahat ng mga monsters na haharapin niya. So, another example is, wala kong picture, pero one good example is sa mga action movies natin. So, even though hindi sinabi na nasasaktan yung mga characters po natin, pero alam natin na pag halimbawa nakahawak sila sa chan nila, tapos yung lakad nila is medyo uh, yung isang paalang nila yung nagagalaw nila ng ayos, so, alam natin na yung character involving the story is in pain po. So, yun po yung pinaportray ng full shot po natin. So, pinapakita po nito yung mga different action na meron po ang isang um, film po natin or yung isang movie. Okay? Next is the medium close shot. It shows a subject down to his or her chest or waist. It is used to emphasize both the actor and their surroundings by giving them an equal presence on a screen. Okay, so one good example is from Avengers Endgame. So, si Tony Stark, nung i-snap niya na yung... So, spoiler alert! <laughs> spoiler alert! So, nung i-snap niya na yung... Uh, tag dito. Yung gauntlet, in, uh, yung Infinity Stones. So, as you can see dito, uh, pinapakita nito yung emotion ni Tony Stark. So, nung hawak niya na yung uh, Infinity Stones. So, in pain yung character niya. At the same time, uh, nandun pa rin or pinapakita pa rin dito yung settings ng story po natin. Okay? So, that's one good example of our medium clone, close shot. Next is our close-up shot. Okay? So, it is a full screenshot of a subject face showing the finest nuances of expression. Okay? So, one good example is from Harry Potter po natin. So, si Harry Potter dito, um, nung kahalaban niya si, Voldem si Voldemort, it shows emotion, it shows emotion, or it adds emotion, it adds emotion dun sa scene po na to. So, dito makikita yung galit, yung anger, yung hira, yung hira, ng pagkikipaglaban niya kay Voldemort and so on po. So, nagpapakita din to ng itsura. Pag halimbawa, kakatapos niya lang sa mga performance tasks. Tapos, mayroon na namang additional tasks na i-upload yung teachers. No? So, joke lang yun. Okay. So, next po natin 
is the extreme close-up shots. So it is a shot of a hand, eye, mouth, or any objects in details. So it allows the viewers to enter the character's personal space, revealing traits and emotions that might otherwise go unnoticed. Okay, so one good example na extreme close-up shots po natin is from um, the movie Titanic. So mostly si extreme close-up shots po natin is um, ito po yung ginagamit po for mga um, romantic scenes. So para mapakita yung mga emotion na kadalasan ay hindi makikita or kadalasan or para mas maramdaman natin yung feeling of love or feeling ng connection through the character. So through um, the main characters of the story of a romantic movie or of a movie po. Okay? So kaya po kadalasan gumagamit po tayo ng extreme close-up shots. So we have also the point of views. So first is the establishing shot. It is often used at the beginning of a scene uh, to indicate the location or settings. It is usually a long shot taken from a neutral position. So I've already uh, give you an example of establishing shot. So kanina yung Hogwarts. So we can consider that as an establishing shot because um, uh, it provides yung setting ng story po natin or kadalasan si establishing shots po natin nakikita po natin to or kadalasan nating napapanood uh, nakakakita ng mga gantong shot sa mga series such as for example Friends so sa Friends if uh, they will transition into, see, uh, into a different scene or kadalasan pag um, kung familiar kayo sa friends uh, kadalasan pag tapos nilang pumunta sa apartment ipapakita naman yung uh, coffee shop na central perk so meaning so papakita siya na medyo matagal so para mapakita na dun yung next na um, setting ng story natin okay so that's what we call the establishing shot so next is the point of view shot it shows the scene from the perspective of a character or one person's most newsreel footages are shown from the perspective of the newscaster. Okay? So, one good example pagdating po sa point of view shot is yung mga um, motor vlogging, so yung mga extreme stunts ng mga bikers natin or mga nagpa-parkour. So, another good example of this is yung mga broadcasters po natin once na nagkaroon ng mga flash news or once na uh, uh, nagbabalita sila. So, yung cameraman ay is holding the camera while yung newscaster po natin is ini-interpret or sinasabi niya kung ano yung nasa point of view niya nung time na um, nung time na nagbabalita po siya. Okay? So, that's one good example of point of view shot. Next is the over-the-shoulder shot. So, it is often used in the dialogue scene, a frontal view of a dialogue partner from the perspective of someone standing behind and slightly to side of the other partner so that part of both can be seen. So, one good example of over-the-shoulder shot is from the, from the movie Harry Potter ulit. So, as you can see, pag merong over-the-shoulder shot, of course, makikita natin yung um, shoulder. So, shoulder nung kausap ni Harry or kausap ng isang character natin. So, and then, um, probably magkakaroon siya ng mga reverse angle shot. So, as you can see, pagdating po sa mga over-the-shoulder shots po natin, so, kung sino yung merong dialogue, so, kung sino yung merong dialogue sa scene, so, siya yung malinaw yung nakikita natin. While the other one is mer medyo blurry po yung nakikita po natin. So, para po makapag-focus po tayo or ma-focus po natin yung ating eye, so yung ating eye, dun po sa emotions and dialogues na uh, sinasabi po nung character, yung, nung character. Okay? Next is the reaction shot. It is a short shot of a character's response to an action. So, one good example of this is um, from the movie Logan. So, nung time na parang may tinurok si Wolverine 
sa kanya. So it provides na uh, it provides reaction na bumalik yung lakas niya. So kung napanood niyo na si Logan or kung napanood niyo na yung movie na Logan, uh doon po sa scene na yon is or doon po sa movie na yon, spoiler alert po ulit. So doon po sa movie na yon is medyo matanda na si Wolverine. So pero nung meron siyang tinurok sa kanya, so it shows na bumalik yung uh, pagiging malakas nung character niya po. Okay? So that's one good example ng ating reaction shot. Next po natin is the insert shot. So it is a detail. Okay, so it is a detail shot which quickly gives visual information necessarily to understand the meaning of a scene. Okay? So, this shows yung sa app po natin. So, kadalasan ginagamit po si insert shot scene natin or si insert shot po natin so that yung mga viewers or yung viewers po is makapag-focus or magkaroon ng attention to details. So, kadalasan yung insert shot natin, uh, meron tayong tinatawag or kadalasan kung very um, active kayo pagdating sa Marvels. So, nandito yung mga Easter eggs natin. So, Easter eggs natin sa mga films and so on. So, kadalasan nandun po yan sa insert shot scenes po. Okay. So, sa details of what um, kung ano yung mangyayari pagdating sa, fi sa film or pagdating sa ending ng film natin and so on. Okay. Next is the reverse angle shot. It is a shot from the opposite perspective po. Okay, so a reverse angle shot is parang over the shoulder shot din siya. So, yun nga lang, nagre-reverse yung, uh, nagre-reverse yung angle niya. So, once na nakapag sabi na ng dialogue yung isang character, mare-reverse naman yung angle or yung camera doon sa uh, kausap niya na nagsasalita ng dialogue, then siya naman yung magkakaroon ng over the shoulder shot. Okay? So, that's one good example natin ng reverse angle shot from the uh, Netflix series Squid Game. Okay, next po natin is the handheld camera shots. The camera shot is not mounted on a tripod and instead it is held by the camera person. Uh, it is resulting in less stable shot. So we all know naman na pag mga handheld shots po yung ginamit po natin is probably or yung mga shots po na coming from the camera is medyo pwedeng maging blurry. So, pwedeng maging blurry or halimbawa naman is konting galaw lang or alam naman natin yung hands natin medyo hindi siya staple. So, konting galaw lang, uh, it could affect yung um, yung shot na gusto po natin punin that time. So, that's what we call yung handheld shots po natin. Okay, so next is different camera angles. So first, we have the aerial shot or what we call overhead shot or also called bird's eye shot. So long or extreme long shots of the ground uh, to the air. So one good example po nito is, yan. so from, I'm, I don't know kung saan, nakita ko lang siya sa Google. So, aerial shot gives viewers a deeper understanding on what is happening below both literally uh, and metaphorically pagdating sa isang movie or pagdating sa isang film po natin. While meron naman tayong tinatawag na high angle shot, it shows people or object or objects from above higher than an eye level. Okay, so from Avengers Bullet. So this conveys information of illicit emotion, uh, emotional response coming from an audience po. Okay, so next is the low angle shot or below shot. It shows people or objects from below lower than the eye level. Okay, that's what we call the low angle shots po. Okay, so an, an example of low angle shot po natin. Okay, so um, pagdating po sa low angle shots po natin, it conveys number of emotion or feeling about the subject in the frame. 
So as you can see, dito po sa frame na to, um, from perspective ni Loki, so from the perspective of Loki, as makikita po natin yung anger. So yung anger pagdating sa mukha ng iba, ibang Avengers, while the others naman is parang calmness na kasi tapos na yung uh, pakikipaglaban nila kay Loki. Like for example, si uh, Natasha Romanoff, pati si Captain America. So, okay. So that's what we call the low angle shot. And lastly, the eye level shot or straight on angles or straight on angles use a subject from the level of a person's eye. So from the Netflix series Stranger Things, as you can see si Eleven or si Millie Bobby Brown, uh, nakikita natin siya ng malinaw while the others is malabo po. So because ito po yung standard or ito po yung um, ginagamit po yung camera angle as a human vision. So, kadalasan po, pag tayo is nakikipag um, tinginan or um, pag ginagamit po natin ang mata natin sa pagtingin is yung straight po na tinitingnan natin is malinaw. While yung nasa gilid po natin is malabo. So, same lang ng pinoportray or same po ng pinoportray pagdating po sa eye level shot natin. So, as you can see, si Millie Bobby Brown nung tinitingnan natin ngayon is malinaw. While the others po, so, while the others po is malabo. Same same ng perspective pagdating po sa ating eyesight. Okay? Next is the camera movement. So, we have different camera movements such as the pan shots. So, the camera pans move horizontal from left to right, or vice versa across the pictures. Okay? Okay, so as you can see, um, meron po tayo dito ang picture ng horse, isa kayo man, so I think nagigipag-raise sila. And based dun sa picture, so ito po yung, yung pan shot po natin is um, effective way po siya ng mga photographer para ma-identify yung fast-moving um, ng isang subject po. So, ng isang subject or ng isang photo. So, dito, even though yung picture na nakikita po natin is hindi gumagalaw, pero alam natin na mabilis yung pangyayari, um, pangyayari pagdating dito sa photo na to. Bakit? Because of yung different blurry angles or yung different blurry na nakikita po natin. So, it shows na rapid speed yung, so merong rapid speed na nangyayari po dito sa ating picture. Next po is tilt shot. So, the camera tilts up or moves upward or tilts down, moves downward ar around a vertical line. So, pagdating po sa ating uh, tilt shot, so this is useful po for establishing shots that contains tall vertical scenery or introducing a character in a dramatic or in a dramatic fashion po. Okay? That's what we call a tilt shot. While the tracking shot naman po, it is the camera or the camera follows along next to or behind a moving object or a person. Okay? So, ito po yung example po natin. So, kadalasan din po or another example po natin pagdating sa tracking shot is pag tayo is nanonood ng mga ka, uh, car reviews, uh, car reviews, or even uh, motor reviews, and so on. <coughs> that comes from our YouTube. So, yun po yung sample po natin ng mga tracking shot po. So, kadalasan, uh, It provides as a real-time journey po. Or it provides as uh, something na parang uh, tayo talaga mismo yung tumitingin from our own uh, pers perspective po. Okay? So, that's what we call uh, that's what we call tracking shots. Okay? Next po natin is zoom. The, ta uh, the stationary camera approaches a subject by zooming in or moves farther away by zooming out. Okay? 
So, as an example dito. So, as you can see, dito po sa ating example is habang po nagzo-zoom in yung camera po natin, it provides uh, or pinapakita po nito yung emotion ng ating main character or nung character sa story. And we have the conventions. So, conventions, it refers to a standard or norm that acts as a rule governing behavior. So, these are generally established and accepted ways of doing something. Next is the message. The information sent from a source to a receiver. While the other one naman po is audience. It is the group of consumer which is tayo, uh, mananood, for whom a media message was constructed, uh, constructed as well as anyone else who is exposed to the messages. Okay, that is what we call audience. Next is the producers, the people engaged in the process of creating and putting together media contents to make a finished media products. Okay, that's what we call producers. Stakeholders, uh, such as libraries, archives, museums, internet, and uh, archives, sorry, museums, internet, and other relevant information uh, providers po natin. Okay? So, take note of this, guys. The audience experience can affect his impression about a particular piece of information. Uh, the audience interpretation of message differs because of their own knowledge. An audience can derive a different meaning from a message depending on his point of view. So, we, I think we all know naman that. So, probably pagka nanonood tayo ng movie, pwede, halimbawa, um, itong, halimbawa si, um, manonood na, uh, manonood one, is gusto niya si gantong character. While si manonood two naman, is ayaw niya sa ganong character. Uh, let's say, for example, um, from the movie, or let's say, halimbawa, um, kay Thanos. So, merong ibang tao na gusto, na gusto yung idea ni Thanos dun sa half of the universe. So, half of the universe is um, magbabanish. While the others naman is ayaw. So, while the others naman is ayaw. So, depende po sa perspective po, pagdating sa tao po, involving, uh, watching the movie po. Or depende po sa um, interpretation nila or in their own knowledge po, kung paano po nila i-adapt yung message that comes from the movie or that comes from uh, other, uh, let's say, even music man yan, media contents man, media contents man yan, or, or let's say, uh, photographs man yan. So, depende, uh, it depends on their own knowledge po. Well, the medium is also the message. A stakeholder shares the information different from the others. And that's our reminder. And thank you po. So, here are our sources for this um for this video and thank you guys uh if you like the video kindly click the like button so thank you and have a great day everyone